Sony decided to go a different route with their flagship smartphone, something that retails for about $920. So yeah, it's, it's a premium device. Now, we're in an era where we have bezel-less displays from Oppo to uh, the OnePlus to punch holes from the Galaxy S10 Plus, and Sony said, nope, we are not going that route. They've delivered a smartphone that is about 6.5 inches. It is slender in, in height, and it's got a 21 by nine aspect ratio. That is really important because Sony says, look, this is a cinematic display. Uh, matching what you find in most movie screens in terms of aspect ratio. Now your standard smartphones usually do about 16 by nine. Uh, with notches, it all varies with some kind of weird number. And Sony also says this is a 4K display. Though, this uh, the proper dimensions are 3840 by 1640, while we know 4K is by 2160. That being said though, this does support HDR, Rec 2020. Um, so you've got all those capabilities in there. And I have to tell you, this, this display really does shine. Looking at content, looking at stuff on the display, it's truly amazing. Images look really good. The wallpapers just stand out, One Punch Man. We have the link for you guys down below. If you want to pick up that wallpaper, go ahead and use it. Um, but images stand out, videos look really crisp. When you're on Netflix, you're browsing, and you jump into, say, like Avengers um, uh, Infinity War, and you, you see how lovely and sharp it is in cinema mode. Now, uh, you know, certain apps will perform a certain way. Netflix all does support HDR as well. So some of the movies they have in HDR showcase really well. But whether you're watching Netflix or you're watching YouTube videos, those videos look good. And that aspect ratio really does look nice for content. Uh, I've got to say it looks really good and it does well. As I mentioned, there is a, it's a cinema display and this is cinema mode, which you can go into the display settings to switch. Uh, and of course, when you're in cinema mode, that will, may use more battery life, but in case of battery life with this, I haven't noticed any hits whatsoever. So I do like what I see from it. It's lovely, it's sharp, it's vibrant. And I like that aspect of that here. Now, combined with that, of course, you've got Dolby Atmos built into it. Uh, and then you do have stereo speakers, plus that new vibration mode they, they announced earlier this year, which gives a little bit more oomph when you're watching those Avengers movies or you know action movies in a sense. Uh, and it, it comes out really nice. It, it's lovely. Now, the title of this video says, you know, Xperia 1, you know, love-hate relationship. And it really feels like that way with this device. There's so many things I do love and there's so many things Sony has done well. The display is one of them. And we go into the fact that it's powered by Snapdragon 855. It's got six gigs of RAM and some may say, uh, I needed more. And for the pricing, I would say so but it performs really well. Now, 120 gigabytes of storage, you can expand that with a micro SD card and there's a you know, SIM tray slot, which is quite easy to pull out and open and, and put in your SD card there. But performance is really good. We did some gaming on here. You can go check out that specific video, checking out gaming on the device that has, of course, a 21 by nine aspect ratio and 4K. Now, your games do not run at 4K because most games are capped at 1080p, but they still look really good. And performance on here was very, very nice and it ran really cool those are the things that sony has done well with this device and i've got to say it looks it looks pretty good now you're thinking okay thunder e right well it, videos look great that's wonderful gaming is also really solid how about usability it's a long device and that's where some of the things come to bear now, because of this aspect ratio, it's going to be harder. And I've got big hands. I've really got big hands. And for me, it's still harder to stretch to the top hand corners and sometimes I have to use a two-handed. And that comes into play quite a bit. The other thing too is the button positioning. You've got the volume button on the volume button, the fingerprint sensor, the power button, and a camera button all on the right hand side, which is all nice and dandy being on one side. I do like it for a device this size. Now I do wish the fingerprint sensor and the power button were both the same and not two separate buttons, like the Galaxy S10e. Uh, I think that would have just made it much easier to power on the device, turn on, you know, toggle, those kind of things. But the fingerprint sensor is uh, quite effective on its own. So, but again, those are the little things that I do wish Sony just had done because to me it makes so much more sense. The dedicated camera button is nice and it's a nice uh, um, uh, 
departure from uh, what we normally have. So I do like that there. Now you've got a 3300 milliamp battery and granted battery life on this is pretty good. I would like to see more, especially if you're gonna be watching more video content in here. Um, you know, 3300 is nice, but this display is, quite, you know, it's a larger display and also it's a very different size format and you're pushing 4K. I would like to get much more battery life from this. Now, when we move to the back of the device, this is where we have a quandary. Uh, Sony has a triple camera setup. Uh, you've got uh, all 12 megapixel cameras. None of them are using, none of, no, no lens there is the new 48 megapixel sensor, which Sony makes. And Sony makes the, one of the best sensors out there. A lot of smartphones use Sony sensors, uh, you know, really good ones uh, all around. But Sony is not using the 48 megapixel sensor, and that's fine, uh, but the camera, app and algorithm, the main camera app algorithm, is where I am truly, truly disappointed. It doesn't showcase what Sony has built, and it comes up as being really weak. You look at the images, daytime images are okay in terms of uh, polishing, um, in terms of look, uh, nighttime images are dull. It, it represents a really dark scene, sometimes even darker than where they are, and something that I'm not a fan of. I wish Sony did a much better job in highlighting that. And I think that's where, again, you know, with the kind of camera prowls, I, I'm using a Sony Alpha camera here, and it's, it's really good. Sony makes really good lenses, but it's not translating here on their smartphones. But it does translate somewhere else. Again, this is where my frustration comes in. There's a Cinema Pro app, which recorded a cinematic video recording off the camera. You guys go check that out. And granted in this app, it's all in manual mode. I wish there was an auto. That being said, if you're gonna shoot cinema, you, you wanna change as each scene changes. You can change your LUTs in there. You can change your uh, every single item as well as, well as also uh, the uh, frame rate and you know what resolution you're recording. But it's a really good app and the processing on that app is solid. Videos are really nice and crisp here. And I'm wondering why Sony just didn't use this app as a basis for its main camera app. It feels like a disconnect. It feels like maybe this was made by the Alpha team um, because it's an Alpha cinema camera app and that was just made by the mobile team. And I think that's where I find a huge disconnect with this device. That kind of brings it down to me in certain aspects. Other things like the fact that it doesn't have wireless charging. I'm not saying wireless charging is needed, but at this price point, I think it's always best to stack in more and more. It does have fast charging, but it's a really standard, uh, standard affair here. There is no headphone jack as well. So people like me who like headphones, headphone jacks, well, you're out of luck here. I think with the Xperia 1, as I grab it and I put it in my hands here, this is a device that I think has a lot of promise. The display is lovely. Look at that. Just looking at One Punch Man here looks really, really good. It's, it's fantastic. They've done a good job here. Uh, they've done a good job with the sizing. There's so many things they've done well here that I really, truly commend Sony on but I wish they actually took time on other things. Photography is really important, front-facing camera, rear cameras. People care about that because this is the main camera they own nowadays. And not putting the time in that main camera app really is disappointing, especially when they did a lot of a really good job on the Cinema Pro app, which kind of gets me confused. And I think that's something that a lot of people are gonna find daunting. So if you're consuming content, the Xperia 1 is great. The screen layout is fantastic. It allows you to soak it in, watching those movies, watching YouTube videos. It's breathtaking. Audio from this is really good. Very good battery life all, all around and very good gaming performance. Yes, I am terrible at PUBG and most mobile shooters, but you get a good idea of what this phone can deliver and what Sony was trying to do. I think there's some miss things missing with the camera and hopefully they can grind that out. That being said though, I think the Sony Xperia 1 has a place and I think it has certain features that will fit for certain people. And hopefully that helps you out in this video. So guys, if you have any questions or any comments, let me know. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to pick up any of the wallpapers we use, we have the links for you in the description. Thank you very much. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button, hit the notification icon to get notified of our latest videos, and always enjoy your entertainment.